welcome back to the Imaginary Gallery. It is TJ, your host, and uh, tonight's a question. So, you think you're dating a narcissist? What do you do? Well, there are a lot of questions that come up with this subject. One of them is, well, can this person be fixed or helped? Or can we work this out? Unfortunately, the answer to both questions is a pretty solid no. It's just the nature of the situation, which I'm here now to cover, because a lot of us are optimistic. We think that, for like in my situation, when when I was younger and growing up and getting older and older, I would find myself in certain conflicts with certain people, whether it's parents, teachers, others, whoever. I, oh, I eventually learned at one point, you know, if there's conflict, it can be resolved, and it's just a matter of proper communication about the issue, which worked. There'd be a problem I'd have, there'd be a problem somebody else had, and I'd say, look, let's get together, and I would discuss, and then usually, when the discussion was over, my point was heard, their point was heard, and a compromise is made. So, keep that idea in mind. And, of course, we're assuming that if you are entering into any types of relationships that you're actually an honest person who is being who you really are. That's a key point. Well, the reason why there's such a pessimistic answer to those two questions is you have to look at what you're dealing with because this is one of the these this thing I'm about to tell you is probably something that might be in the back of your mind somewhere but you just don't want to believe it because usually if you're involved with one of these characters or creatures if they performed their first stage properly you probably have a lot of hooks. You're hooked in a lot of ways. It could be many different things. But if you're here right now, you've probably moved beyond that first stage. And you've, you're either in the devaluation or you've just recently gotten out of that to the discard and you're wondering what you can do to fix it. Oh, you remember. You have to remember one important thing. That all, I would say, I rarely say all, but let's just say mostly all of the feelings you have that are associated with this person probably generated from the idealization, which is in the beginning, which is when you probably had some insecurity about something about yourself and this new person came into your life and loved whatever it was you said you thought was wrong and that like melted you thinking, oh, I found someone that understands me. And then it just went from there and it just went on and on and on. And the problem is, your mind has a file of that great person who was like no one else. Well, the problem is that person who was like no one else never really existed. It was a creation that was custom made and designed for you. Because most of us know that if we meet a new person, it's going to be awkward here or there somewhere but when you met this one it was like total harmony from the very mo first moment if the other person suggested let's do this and you didn't like this you might say oh I don't really like this and it would be like, that's fine we'll do something else and you would think wow most people aren't like that and <laughs> most people would be like well tough we're going to see this anyway 
those are some of the things that influence us because it's it's a game. It's a uh, mind control type game. You must eventually learn and or realize that the hope that we sometimes feel after being involved with such a person, we have a, an optimistic hope and we think that I remember how great this was, oh I want to get back to that and the thing you have to understand and realize is that the basis of your hope was all put onto an illusion and it's hard to understand that because most of us don't picture other people to be like these people are which are basically hollow shells that assume a new identity for whatever target they're chasing. And see, we're not used to that. I've never heard about that. Like in grade school and high school, they never taught us. Be aware of people who pretend to be that it doesn't get taught. So we have to go through our lives and see what looks like another human being about our age. And we think, oh, we must be pretty similar. And, and then they... They do the stuff they do, and then it gets to the later parts, later stages, and we're left perplexed, thinking, uh, what is this? <laughs> well, the reason why the prognosis is so unbelievably poor is because of what you're dealing with. What you're dealing with is a flawed design. If I wanted to make a comparison, I would say, let's say you manufacture motorbikes and you've got this beautiful design. It's perfectly lovely. It's gorgeous. And the way you construct it involves some plastic design and it's right near where the motor is. So you've got this great looking motorbike, all the famous people look at it and admire it and wish they had one and so on. But it turns out that the way you've got it set up with that plastic part near the motor is they can start the motorbike, they can drive it, but no matter who or where or when is driving it, <laughs> the way it's set up is a flaw the plastic by the motor is always going to melt which in turn is going to deteriorate the motor and everything's going to fall apart it's a flaw in the design and now a normal non-abusive person might just say well that's easy just move the location well that is not an option here in this discussion because we move back to the nar narcissistic personality disorder or cluster B person, they are like a person that has created this motorbike and they insist that everything remains exactly as is. So when you compare this to your relationship with that person, you may be tempted to try to fix, to make things better, to repair whatever damage has occurred well like with our motorbike that's like going to the inventor saying look your motorbike's great but I think you should move the plastic part here because of and they'll be like no 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 it has to be where it is and that's it so that is the same type of mentality you're dealing with when you are involved with one of these creatures the one thing to keep in mind is that these creatures do not change. And there's a reason they do not change. Because like in the beginning we asked, well, can we get help for this? Well, no, because guess why? There's a very good reason. What you're dealing with is a person with a shame-based personality which doesn't necessarily mean today they're ashamed of something they do wrong or whatever, but it means during their development years 
that they did not express their real feelings, their real emotions, because of some type of traumatic experience. They basically learn to survive daily, so they also learn what they do like, what feels good, what doesn't feel good, and then they get feedback from outside, which would say, that's wrong, don't you do that, and when they were a kid, they probably felt shame of some kind, but that's gone now. That's a thing of the past. But their shame-based personality means that they really don't have any way to like openly express themselves and be happy with who they are. They have to put on a different mask for each situation. The second part of this shame-based personality is the other component, which is people who are fitting in this cluster B category do not see that anything is wrong with them or their ways of dealing with day-to-day -day life. So that is the main component, which we'll come back to the other one. It just had to be given for a basis of this. But if, you're, if you've got somebody who does what they do and feels that what they do is right, well, if someone else disagrees with that, they're not going to be successful if they're trying to convert or tell the cluster B that their behavior is wrong. Which, if anybody was watching the cluster B's life with your relationship or any other, they would clearly see, well, oh, that person needs to get help. That person needs to resolve the problem. Well, the thing is, there is no problem as far as the cluster B goes. There's no problem at all with the cluster B, and it, it relates back to the shame-based personality. Because at a very young age, they shoved aside the fact that they're probably a piece of trash. That is what the message was they were given at a very young age. And they don't want to face that. So it is shoved back. So they don't realize, of course, that this very situation is what led to their current situation, but they choose to see any problem with any relationship as being external, external locus of control. It's not their fault. They could not dare even consider the fact it could be their fault because of this fragile thing that shoved back in the back that says they're a piece of trash, they don't want to face that or accept that, so they will fight any type of resistance along the way, which is why if you've dealt with this type of person that was always all nice and great to the love bomb stage and the idealization, and then when you start to have issues with particular obviously abusive things they're doing, you'll notice that if you even politely suggest that something be corrected because of, you might even use your own feelings like, when you did that terrible thing the other night, I really felt like I meant nothing at all and blah, blah, blah. Well, for a normal, non-abusive person, that would be like a cry for help on your part, and they would be rushing to assist in any way they could, much like the narcissist did when it was idealizing you. But that is mysteriously gone when the subject turns to the narcissist's behavior, unfortunately. And your brain is like hooked on the first impression, which is anytime I have a problem, it's resolved. And now you have a problem and it's not being resolved. Well, you'll notice with this type of personality flawed person is you have a legitimate concern because let's say you are being honestly who you are from the day one and then you've met this narcissistic personality person who was perfect for you, a perfect match, but then eventually as the time passes you notice a whole different set of values appearing based on behaviors and conversations. So naturally you are going to be affected and going to be wondering what's going on, let me fix this. Well, when you try and you say, hey, look, let's discuss this. 
and you talk about whatever the nasty issue is that they do, because remember, they, they establish their relationship with you stating they have the same values you do. Well, then, as time progresses, you notice them behaving in ways that do not fit with those values, so you're looking for naturally an explanation. A major clue would be that the narcissistic suppose the one you think is a narcissistic personality disorder they did something that is really bad and the moment you sit them down and try to say okay this was really bad well you can identify a red flag if you actually do have a legitimate concern and when you present it you receive a response which is something like, well, so what that I did that? You had done what you had done. Or, I just did that because of retarded excuse. All the, Any of that stuff is, that's telling you, basically, the person is saying to you, I am who I am. I'm not going to change who I am. I'm not going to handle anything any differently. And, I mean, that's the message you should be getting from this because clearly there is not even one iota of consideration for your viewpoint. It's completely rejected. Well, that is what I'm tying into the fact or the, the situation with this question, these questions. <laughs> so, that ties in directly to this discussion where we say it's no win because you're dealing with this flawed part of the process. The flaw is it doesn't see that there's anything wrong at all on its part. And from our previous examples, it has no intention of changing any part of itself. So with that scenario, you've got a no-win situation. Because you have to realize this person you're idealizing now never played fair with you from the beginning. Not even from day one. And see, that's why I said in other videos that by the time you realize you're involved in a game, you're probably already losing. And the reason for that is because from the very beginning, they are like a sponge soaking in any piece of information they can get about you in order to construct their fictitious persona or mask that's designed to appeal to you. They're going to listen to you talk about how I met this one person and it was really awkward because of something and then that he'll, he or she will listen to that and then make sure whatever that was is never done in front of you at the beginning. So you're conditioned with the first impression to think that wow you just accidentally happened to stumble upon someone who is so much like you. Well, think again. But again, those things they say when they fight you and argue with you and don't even address your, your concern, those are blatant examples of a person who feels that they have done nothing wrong and, even more importantly, they will not dare change the way they do. And the one thing I add is that if the same circumstance appeared again, they would react in the same way, which would bring you right back to where you are. Now, I am not considering myself any kind of relationship expert, but there are just a few things that I would think would be universal as far as a healthy relationship would go. And what that would involve would be, as I stated before, you're an honest person presenting yourself as yourself and you meet another person. Well, for a healthy or real relationship to develop, it would involve two different people from different places, two different backgrounds and all kinds of factors, but in real life, what normally happens would be that they interchange and exchange information back and forth, they notice each other's habits and each other's 
quirks and anything else and over a period of time they would get to know each other for real because each person is contributing his or her real self and there might be places that don't work together places that do and places that could be slightly adjusted and that's like a normal healthy type circumstance but usually when two people meet from different backgrounds they're not going to fall or fit into place immediately from day one that's the type of illusion the cluster B creates is that oh we just happen to meet and happen to have everything in come fake but it back to the honest example what normally happens is person number one has their viewpoint person number two has theirs and they interact and like we mentioned before with the discussion of communication if there's a conflict you discuss both sides well the problem is none of these work with the narcissistic personality disorder because the best you're ever getting from them is that mask it's not a real person with deep set value systems and consistency it's a fictitious mask designed to facilitate an ulterior motive which could be as simple as I want my family to think that I'm respectable because I have the same partner for two holidays in a row or something they'll never tell you this but when you look at it for what it is you've got that flawed design which is not even a real human being and then you've got you who's trying to connect to this robot reptoid reptilian shape-shifting monster and it's just not an option it doesn't happen now you may think yes it does well anytime you're led to believe it does is usually because the reptilian shape-shifter alien monster had needed something from you still so in the beginning stages if you became upset and even suggested to end things if that reptilian monster wasn't through with you yet you can believe then there would have been a oh let me fix this let me help you because it's part of that agenda but once they've got you hooked in that agenda is tossed aside and next you see the real creature and many of us want to keep thinking back to those first impression moments to think, well, there was a time when everything was, well, that's before you figured out what you were dealing with. And chances are, if you figured out what you're dealing with and you've tried to address it face to face, you will be told that your opinions are wrong and inaccurate. And that's further abuse, by the way. But if they do something really abusive and you say this is really abusive, that's not true. I just did it you'll get to a point where you will say look I want to discuss this again and you'll try and you'll start seeing eyes rolling and you'll basically be put yourself in the position of the nag enemy you are now the abusive one because you are daring to challenge or question the fake mask this person is wearing well, see that's what happens and when you find yourself in this situation it's best to leave and it's difficult because of all the mind control at the beginning where you thought you found the most compatible person but once you realize it was fake it should make things easier but if you stick around as I always say it only gets worse so run get away you'll be better off Look, I don't know why you're so skeptical of other people. Why you think you can't trust other people. The only reason I lied to you is because you deserved it. You deserved to be lied to. Don't blame me. Blame yourself. Grow up. I grew up in trash. You had a silver spoon in your mouth. And you should have welcomed me into your home before I even asked. 
So, whatever happened, well, don't blame me for it. You're to blame. You're so selfish. What is wrong with you? Why couldn't you just accept me? I would have taken care of you. Well, be <laughs> you please give me a break? So what? Snakes and mice. Ooh, big deal, baby.